Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. And today what we're going to do is learn how to work with birthday balloons, something that you would blow up for a birthday party, and we'll learn how to put these balloons directly into a candle flame and have them not uh, pop, have them not uh, melt and pop the balloon. So it's very impressive, it's very easy to do, and uh, we'll learn the science behind what makes this happen. Now we will have a candle in this experiment, so you need to make sure and get permission to do this experiment, get some help, and always have your safety glasses, which I have here. So we'll put those on, and we'll go over what we need for this guy. All you need for this experiment is a candle, a very small candle will do fine. You'll need a cup of water. You will need a couple of uh, regular old birthday balloons. I have two of them here, and we'll show you why I have two of them in just a second. And you can tie these balloons, you know, with your fingers, or if you're lazy like me, you can use paper clips to hold the ends of the balloons closed. All right, so what we'll do is go ahead and get set up here. We'll put the water to the side, put the balloons to the side, we'll put the candle front and center, and we will light the candle. So let me go ahead and do that first. All right, so it just takes a second to go ahead and light the candle. Candle's lit. And the next thing we're going to do is we'll show you what happens to a regular old balloon whenever you put it in here. What do you think is going to happen? Well, if, you, if I blow this up and I put it on top of that candle flame, the hot air is going to go. It's going to hit that, uh, it's going to hit that uh, rubber. It's going to melt it, a little hole, and then pop. The balloon goes pop. So let's go and check that out. Let me go and blow this up. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to blow it up. Now you can tie it if you're really good at tying balloons. Tying balloons can be difficult, so if you want, you can just, once you get it blown up, you can just twist it a few times like this. So I've got a nice little twist at the end, and then grab one of my paper clips there and just put it right on top of that guy. And if you've done it you know, nicely, you should be able to hold the end of it and just kind of keep it closed, and that, that paper clip should keep it closed. All right, so what do you think is going to happen? If I put this guy right on top of this candle flame, uh, it should pop, right? So let's check that out. So we'll put, put it there. Let's see how close we can get before it goes pop. A little bit down, and there it goes. It goes pop. So we were just a few inches away from that balloon. That's why it's important to wear your safety goggles, too, anytime you have something kind of popping like that. Um, so the candle flame put heat into the air. It didn't even touch the flame. The heat that was coming up off the candle flame went directly to the rubber, made, made a tiny small hole in that rubber because it melted it, and then as soon as it made a small tiny hole, the whole thing uh, just kind of pops, right? So that's what we kind of expect. So let's go and relight the candle. It looks like our balloon actually put out our candle flame. Now, the second time we do it, that's why we have two balloons. First time we show you what it looks like regular. Now. I want to do the same thing again, but now what we're going to do is put a little bit of water in our balloon. We're not going to fill this balloon with water. We're going to put a little bit of water in it, maybe even less than half a cup of water. So what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of water into the bottom. So now I have a little bit of water. I'm going to put a little bit more. I would guess, well, maybe that's like Probably four or five tablespoons of water, really, is all it is. Okay? So we're not filling up the water. We're just putting a, a little bit of water in the bottom of the balloon. Now let me go ahead and blow it up again. Now we're going to go ahead and twist this guy up, just like we did the last time. Nothing different. and put that paper clip on there to hold it there. Now what we have is a balloon, and if we've done it all correctly, we should have water sloshing around the bottom of this balloon. Now, before we do the second part where we put the balloon on top, I'm going to put my candle on a little plate. Uh, the balloon shouldn't pop, but just in case it does, we wanna have a little plate there to try to catch at least some of the water. So what you wanna do is you wanna put, uh, you know you have the water in the bottom of the balloon, and you wanna put it right on top, the same place we had before, and let's go ahead and give it a good count to five and see if we can get this balloon to last. So let's go down. One, two, three, four, five. Now if you put your hand to the bottom, it does feel a little bit warm, but it's not super hot. Why do you think that is? It's because you have water inside of it. So what's happening is the heat from the candle is going into the rubber 
and normally it would pop that rubber, but since there's water in it, water is a great uh, absorber of heat, so to speak. So what happens is you put the heat into the rubber, the water is sitting right behind the rubber on the other side, it's absorbing all that heat, so it's kind of pulling it in. It loves to take in that heat, and water can absorb a lot of heat you know, uh, by itself. So it kind of takes the heat away from the rubber and that kind of prevents it from popping. So let's go ahead and try it one more time and put it even closer. We'll go even a little bit lower. Right on top. And you can see that definitely it would have popped by now. And put your hand on the bottom. Not too warm. And so for our grand finale what we'll do is we'll put the balloon directly on top of the glass and see if by putting it right on top of the glass we can actually smother the candle. So that'll be sort of the grand finale. All right, and so we'll just put it right down there. And the candle is out. So that is a good experiment in basically heat conduction. We did the empty balloon, and that showed us that if you have an empty balloon, you put it on top of a candle flame, it's definitely going to pop, and the reason it pops is because the hot air that's coming off of the candle basically melts a small, tiny hole in the balloon, and then it pops. And it really, the other balloon, I mean, it was very, very, very close to, to the actual uh, candle, but it wasn't even touching the candle before it popped. In this case, uh, what we did is we take the full balloon and we put some water in it and then the heat goes from the candle into the balloon and then it goes into the water that's sitting right on the other side of the balloon. That water is pulling that heat, conducting that heat away from the rubber. So the bottom line is the rubber is not able to get that hot because as soon as it does get a little bit hot, the water sucks that heat away. So that's what causes the rubber not to melt and not to pop. And um, you know we have a bonus science experiment here. What we did is we kind of put we put the balloon directly on top of the candle, right, to smother it, just to show you how close we could get to it. And look what happens now. If we lift this balloon, try to lift it off, we can actually lift the candle. Now, why do you think that's the case? It's sort of a bonus science experiment. What happens is the air that's directly around that candle down uh, where the flame is, is very, very hot, right? So we put the balloon on top. Now, before we put the balloon on top, the air is being pushed away from that candle flame. What happens to things when they get hot? The air wants to expand. When things get hot, like air, it tries to go and push farther out and expand. When things get cooler, they try to contract. So since this candle is hot, the air around that candle, when it was burning, is being pushed away because it's all trying to expand because it's getting hot. Now as soon as we put the balloon on top, we smother the candle, there's no more heat. The air that's trapped in between the balloon and the candle uh, starts to cool down. So it was being pushed away when the candle was on, but once the candle was extinguished, that air that's trapped in there tries to contract and get smaller. And when things get contract, it makes low pressure. So there's atmospheric pressure out here pushing on everything, and inside between the balloon and the candle is a little pocket of air since it it's trapped, and since it cooled down, it actually has low pressure. So you have low pressure, which means low pushing, inside of here. You have outside air pressure pushing on it. So what's really happening here is the outside air pressure, the atmospheric pressure, is holding these things together. We have air pressure pushing up on the bottom and pushing on the balloon, holding it together. We have low pressure on the inside. It's not able to fight it. So the outside air pressure wins and it holds everything together. The only way to get these things off is to kind of pop it off like that. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. I hope you've enjoyed this experiment. Uh, go get yourself the materials needed. Very simple to find uh, things. Candle, couple balloons, couple paper clips if you want. Uh, goggles, of course, and most importantly, adult supervision. Go try it for yourself. Uh, go explore heat conduction and show yourself how you can actually take a regular old balloon from a birthday party, put it right on top of a candle flame, and it will not pop.